sparkly. I'm bubbly. And together, we're Mineraqua. The fresh, sparkling water for those who are bubbling over with life and crave new experiences. Are you thirsty for adventure, more laughs, and more excitement? With Mineraqua in hand, it's easy to live life with sparkle. Just look for the glass bottles with tiny bubbles wrapped in blue. And you'll taste and feel the difference of Mineragua sparkling water. Mineragua, ha, get your fizz. This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kickville. Kickville. <laughs> The Trippers, the Grasshoppers, the Hit One, all gathered in secrecy and fly high as a kite. You're listening to The Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. Tell our friends jumping on in New Orleans at Bayou 95.7, also at uh, 98.9 Rock, Kansas City's Rock Station, and our uh, newest affiliate there in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Good morning, Rock 95. How are you? Big show. Sit and Spins coming up. Ryan Castle, the drug in charge, has the hands-only CPR edition. As Ryan is bringing in some tunes that work with a beat of doing CPR. So if, if you feel inclined to help yeah, someone. If you ever need to help someone, get the playlist ready to go just in case it happens to you. Pick your favorite song. Where's my playlist, man? Anyway, we go. Just, just label it CPR. And, this guy's uh, dying. Where's the playlist? I just want to this song. Oh, there's one song before we go. Don't, don't, don't cut it off. I don't know. Those are late night jams. Don't you know when you put on a song <laughs> and, then, and someone comes in and changes it halfway through? It's like you ask. Can you just let, can you let the just my song go through? I, I'm not going to cut into yours. You know what I mean? Oh, you're talking about a jukebox? Just anywhere, yeah. In general, in the car, whatever. So, but who does that? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, who does that? I don't know. Can't stand that. It's like, let's a lot of people. Play. A lot of people do that. I mean, they do. Yeah, I don't know, know why they give the option. I mean, the jukebox I get, right? Because you're yeah. hoping to be a little more incognito. But like in the car, if you're rocking out, yeah. someone just punches away. Like, what are you doing? So get ready. We're going to give you a bunch of CPR songs. And uh, what you don't need to know has legends that are actually true in our question today. As we talk about some animal encounters, there have been a lot of them lately. 22-year-old man in a coma in Scotland after a bulldog ripped off his genitalia, the whole kit and caboodle. A woman was kicked off a flight because she had an emotional support squirrel. Frontier mm. said, no, you can't do that. A squirrel with large breasts is becoming a social media <laughs> sensation. A guy blew off his own arm when he went out to feed some squirrels because he set up a booby trap. Our question, when did an animal do you dirty? 844-999-OLA. Have squirrels ever been this dangerous? Oh, They've been in the news a lot. They, they have, have, man. Yeah, there's, the there's, more, there's more squirrel stories coming up. An extremely rare disease guy got after eating squirrel. I mean, I guess you could say they're uh, going nuts. Let's go to Kentucky. (laughs) Hello, Matt. Welcome to the men's room. Liquor and whores. Liquor and whores. All right. So it's been years ago, but I was driving down the road, a little backwards country road, and a white-tailed deer literally ran out of the woods and ran into the passenger side of my car. Ran into the passenger door. Now, how fast were you going? I was a little backwards country road. I probably wasn't doing 35, 40. Did it just stun him and did he get up and run away or did he actually uh, dent uh, Yeah, it got up and took off. Okay. It was limping a little bit, but. That's kind of <laughs> dumb. I mean, you know, I just feel like most animals, no matter what you are, human, name, like you try to avoid mm-hmm. hitting stuff, right? I've never hit a, I've never hit a, uh, a deer with my car, but I saw in front of me probably. A hundred yards, a guy who hit a deer on an interstate, and we just saw something fly up. All right. Because it was too far away to see what it was. It looked like so, it, he definitely hit something. Something flew up in the air, and you're like, what is... Because then we we're thinking, like, does something fall off someone's truck or, you know... Right, right, right. You don't know. It's too far away. And then we got up there. People were breaking up, and there's this deer man, and he just kind of looks just shaken, shakes his head off, pops up on four legs... And runs the hell over the over the hey, guardian look, and into the woods. Only other time exactly I've seen what that, happened. My heroin addict friend Willis hit my. I swear <laughs> to God, hit my car going forty five miles an hour. Both of his shoes come off, and this dude, like walking dead, springs up, gets mad, and walks away. He's like a deer. Hey man, in Kentucky, what are some of the other animals that you risk hitting? Right. So in the Northwest, there are bears, there are cougars, and everywhere's got deer. But like, what else am I looking out for in uh, Kentucky? Everybody says that the most dangerous animal is a squirrel because everybody tries to swerve to miss them. That's I ain't for the little boogers. You know, man, my, uh, <laughs> where, where, are, where, where are you in uh, Kentucky? I'm in Frankfort, Kentucky. I, I okay. work at Jim Beam. I sent you an email. Oh, that's right. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. I need two things from you. Uh, first of all, my, my grandmother lives in Pike County. 
So that's full of rattlesnakes. Okay. So you got to be careful with rattlesnakes. Not everywhere. everywhere. Like even when you're walking. When I went for a run there, there was there was, there was a bunch of you know. So I was freaking. Well, you. I know. You went running. Oh, uh, the other thing is, can you find my grandmother a plumber? Do you know a guy? <laughs> I'll put you on hold. I can give it a try. All right, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Send some Jim Beam this way. What did you say, your grandmother? She needs a plumber. Oh Jesus, you don't want to know this. this no, no, it's, it's this is. I just want you to There's think. No plumber about in town. They don't have a plumber at all. No. I went to the freaking Sears to get her a dishwasher because hers broke, right? right? I'm trying to do the nice Which thing. Which just went out of, out of business. No, she's way. had the dishwasher there forever, and she's like 90 years old, so she shouldn't be doing dishes anymore. So my grandma, you know, like, it's $300. I'll go buy you a damn dishwasher. They'll put it in. You know what I mean? You'll be fine or whatever. You know, get me on the back end when you die. Uh, so uh, I didn't say that. She's going to leave you the dishwasher. <laughs> no, That's yeah, my Sandy Randy 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 that like, dishwasher. I go to freaking Sears, man, and they're like, well, yeah, you can buy it. Just where's your truck? And I'm like, you're not going to deliver this thing, put the new hose on and stuff? Like, oh, no, no, we would never do that. We don't need, there's not even a plumber in town. We couldn't insure that. But why do you sell it? Sears! But why do you sell it? Like, I don't know. There's no plumber in town. We will say this. Yeah, I was like, you got to be kidding me. So I had to drive to freaking Pikeville, then they wouldn't do it. Then I had to drive to Logan. Finally, I had a bag of dude. (laughs) What did you do, really? Oh, Oh, you know what I had to do. Come on, man. You know what I had to do for a different dishwasher. When, uh, when did an animal do you dirty? 844-999-OLA. I guess then you added in a Hoover. <laughs> <laughs> and a vacuum. Hello, Kelly. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. How are you guys doing? Well, sir, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm off work. Nice. Best part of the day. Okay. So, when I was younger, I grew up out in Ravensdale, pretty backwoods kind of place, and uh, used to have this big clay pits where I could walk up and go practice shooting. Uh, I was into ski shooting at the time. And uh, it's a gravel road, walking about a mile, and I just kind of get that creepy, spidey sense feeling like, you know, something's watching me. I turn around, and there's a full-on cougar about 20 feet behind me and has been evidently stalking me, and it just sat that, you know, a cat's crouched down and just staring at me. He's in that position. And, uh, yeah, and I was in the position where I filled my pants with about 20 pounds. <laughs> yeah. oh. You didn't actually crack yourself, did you? No, not not literally. Because but uh, I truly do believe that there is a level of fear where you will crap yourself. I'm sure there is. You man. know what I mean? And I, and I don't know that. For I me, know, he I don't just know, described it. I don't know anyone that legitimately has gone through that process. <laughs> not, uh, not quite. It was close. But it, part of it was I had my 20 uh, gauge shotgun in my hand and it was loaded because I was just about to start shooting up well, I wasn't very far away from where I was going to shoot so uh, I just I fired a shot kind of in his direction just off into the bushes I didn't want to uh, all I had was bird shot all it would do is injure it and then God no, I don't want to injure it but uh, it was well, I mean it was stalking me on a gravel road I mean as I'm walking my feet are <laughs> making all kinds of racket and I'm like how in the heck does that thing walk on gravel with making zero sound? Because cats, just, they're, man, half, that's crazy. they're half ghost, half ninja, and all fangs. And how, and how many pounds do you think this thing was? Uh, it was probably, a, it was a good full-size male by the look of it. So, I don't know, maybe 200? Jesus uh, Christ! Know. Jesus, dude. Okay, no wonder you about crapped yourself. I, I mean, if you yeah, didn't he, have he the... would have my day. If you didn't have the shotgun, I suspect you would have crapped yourself. But... Uh, when, yeah. When you fired the <laughs> shot, I mean, was that all you needed to do? Did the thing go away? Yeah, as soon as I fired the shot, it uh, it just turned around, and it, it kind of creeped me out even more because it didn't run away. It just turned around and was like, fine, and just walked away. I'm like, what? <laughs> so are you, wow. are you, what do you do then? I mean, like, do, do you go out, you finish skeet shooting, but are you thinking this thing might still be stalking you? Yeah, I, I decided to just call it quits. I just turned around and walked home. I was like, yeah, I don't think I want to find out. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with that decision, man. Yeah. God damn. Yeah. Did, Ted, didn't you know some dude? I think it was a guy that trained you like a cougar yeah, attack. He did some kung fu or something on it. Yeah, he like wrestled him and did some jiu-jitsu on it. That's he, why we call him the cougar. He literally wrestled Went to cougar. his jiu-jitsu training and took out the cougar. Yeah. Start- well... I mean, he did enough that, like, it ran, like, the cougar was like, all right. And, like, ran off. It tapped. Did out, a cougar of, tap. uh, out of Portland uh, yesterday, Oregon man hunting for deer near Mount Hood killed a cougar after three big cats uh, went after him. Oh! They said the animals did not appear to be scared of him, leaving him no choice but to shoot one. He shot an adult female cougar 
uh, from about 15 meters away. I wish they would just say the poundage on this stuff. That's what I'd like to know. How big are these right. cats? How big is you know this It's weird, too, though, because like cougar attacks are so rare on humans. But all of a sudden, it seems like in the last year, they keep popping up. And why is that? Are we going where they are? Population? I, I mean, mean, it's got to be population in their habitat. But three cats attacking them? Well, he never got attacked, right? He said they were stalking them. But I, just did, miles. I did not yeah. think that they that they work together so well. You know, it's not like a lion's pride in Africa. I'm saying like cougars. Yeah, it's not like as far wolves. as I understood, we're pretty solitary, man. I, I just I can't imagine. And normally, and most of the time, nocturnal. Right. When uh, when did an animal do you dirty? Eight four four nine 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 Ola. Or it could be something about like there's so much of their food. You know, like you look at the sharks at Cape Cod, right? All right. So the sharks turned back up because they did a, such a good job of repopulating the seals. So yeah, now, right. Yeah, so we, yeah, either yeah. lack of food or all their food there, and you're there. Just it could just be the people are tasty. Let's give ourselves some credit. <laughs> Hello, Harry. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 All right. So my story is, I was probably about six or seven years old. I'm originally from the state of Maine. Um, my older brother mm-hmm. had a horse, and I was down there feeding it a carrot out of my bare hand. And I was also petting it on the side of the face all at the same time. Well, after it fully ate the carrot, it was either still hungry or it got mad because I didn't have any more carrot. And it mm-hmm. decided that it wanted to bite me. Well, the place that it bit me on, it, it bit me on my nipple. It almost bit oh, me on my nipple. Oh, 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 damn. oh, no. Maybe you want a pepperoni. Oh, no. <laughs> was it a cold day? I mean, were yeah. you? It was not a cold day. Okay, all right. Oh, I don't know if it was sticking how, how bad was your nipple damage, man? It was basically just dangling there by a piece oh. of skin. You had a dangling oh. nipple. Oh. Like a dangling modifier. <laughs> yeah. It's oh. like that piece of pepperoni oh. that hangs off the side of the pizza on the cheese. <laughs> so, do they just stitch it back on? Yeah, they just ended up throwing it back on. How does your nipples look now? I mean, like, if you were to look in the mirror, do they look, uh, are they equal? Horse or are they, yeah, are they off a little bit? Uh, a little bit, not too much. I used to have a perfect, like, circular scar around that nipple that only stepped bit off, but it kind of faded away over time. Okay. That's a hell of a story at the bar. Yeah, like, really? look, man, I'm going to show you my nipple. I know it sounds weird, but I was once bitten on the nipple by a horse. <laughs> so I still hate horses. Oh, Jesus. Don't nipple put on the Kentucky Derby, man. What ate my... What bit my nipple? <laughs> Makes my nipples hurt just thinking of it. Ryan Castle, drug and charge. Coming up to sit and spin today. We'll have the hands-only CPR edition of more of your calls on our question. When did an animal do you dirty? You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. We return to the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. All right. This one's going to get weird. Follow along. A man in New York... He uh, developed an extremely rare and fatal brain disorder after he ate squirrel brains, according to a new report about the man's uh, death. In 2015, the 61-year-old man was brought to a hospital in Rochester, high uh, WCMF, after experiencing a decline in his thinking abilities, and he lost touch with reality, according to the report. The man had also lost the ability to walk on his own. And an MRI of the man's head <clears throat> revealed a striking finding. I guess the brain scan looks similar to those seen in people with a variant of a fatal brain condition caused by infection, uh, infectious proteins called prions. Now, only a few hundred cases of that had ever been reported, and most were tied to consumption of contaminated beef in the U.K. in the 1980s and in the 1990s. Mad, Mad cow, cow, right. Mad okay. cow disease. In this case, though, the man had another dietary habit that could have raised the risk. His family said he liked to hunt, and it was reported that he liked to eat squirrel brains. Sure. Brains. Then Dr. Tara Chin, a medical resident of Rochester Regional Health, uh, and uh, lead author, she was a lead author on the report, and it's unclear if the man consumed the entire squirrel brain or just squirrel meat that was contaminated with parts of the squirrel. She did not treat the patient, but she discovered the case while writing a report on basically mad cow diseases and other things that the hospital has seen in the last five years. So basically, this guy died because he ate something that was either contaminated within the squirrel brains or the squirrel itself. I, I just feel like, man, if you're going to eat squirrel brains, yeah, you're, you're just putting yourself at the risk. Just go for a better cut of meat. That, right. You know what I mean? Like, I think you like, you know what I mean? I, even ground beef, uh, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Uh, but you got to give this guy some be... credit. He does. Look, 
you know, he hunts the things and he doesn't let anything mm-hmm. go to waste. I mean, okay. I think yeah. most yeah. of us would right. agree, though. Like, mm-hmm. let the brain go to waste. The, it's all right, man. The butcher's special. You just got to cook it that night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you exactly. know what I mean? It can't stand there for two or three days. That's all. Uh, when did an animal do you dirty? 844-999-OLA. Uh, we have some comments, of course, uh, on the subject of cougars. It says, when I was 12, a cougar grabbed me and started dragging me off into the bushes. My two labs saved my life. We lost one of our labs that night. They tracked down and killed the cougar that night. I needed about a dozen stitches to my arm. Wow. That is terrifying. That is crazy. Uh, We had the guy who was feeding a horse. When a horse ran out of carrot, it damn near bit his nipple off. Someone says, I've had my nipple, ear, nose, lip, and tongue pierced by my beautiful big white cockatoo. Oh, man. Your nipple. Like, to me, once you go for the nipple, you're out. My uh, my dad's uh, parrot used to nail you on the ear. Yeah, I mean, so if you had him on your shoulder and for some reason he just decided to turn, he just goes zap and you go, ah! That's why I don't put him on your shoulder. And this guy, as far as animals doing you dirty, I've had a similar experience to this guy. My girl and I were getting busy. She was facing down. I had a leg up on the couch while standing. At the crucial moment, I felt the tongue on my berries. It was her dog. Where's she at? Put me <laughs> yeah. over the edge to finish. Oh, man. It is a horrible feeling, man. When, it is uh, a bad, bad feeling. Well, I'm just thinking of it. When did an animal do you dirty? 844-999-OLA. At least you got a tongue, man. I got a cold-ass nose. It's a, It made contact with the buckeye, dude. It, it was it was alarming. I was so mad at this dog. The dog didn't know what it did wrong, but it could just tell by my mm-hmm. temperament. You know what? I'm just going to go to the opposite end of the house and let's cool off, big man. Like, get out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, Nick. Welcome to the men's room. Is that me? Yes. If you're Nick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I am definitely a Nick. Okay, All right, perfect. Yeah, we'll, so, we'll take this, Nick. You'll do. <laughs> so I was I was probably about seven, and the last guy with the Roy story kind of inspired me because I don't know if there's something that goes on with Roy and crazy animals. but uh, So I had my, my favorite toys growing up at this uh, farm in Roy was Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock, and they were like stand-up dolls where they were like, Actually, I take that back. Not dolls. They were action figures. Right. That's a that's a guy's yeah. doll. There you go. Yeah. Girls have dolls. Yeah. We have action yeah. figures. Yeah. G.I. Joe action figures. Damn right. Yeah. So I had this little dirt pit by the John Deere tractor, and this, this gander and his girlfriend always had this little nest under there, and they would always hiss at me, but I had a good hole dug all the time, and we would just, they would just fight, and man, these geese would chase me every single time I'd go over there, and one day... One day the gander got me, and man, that thing hurt so bad, and I was just screaming. And <laughs> Grandma came running out of the house and and saved me while I was stuck up by the light pole. What? Uh, so the goose bit you? <laughs> oh yeah, it bit me good. Yeah, I had like a. It looked like a red worm strapped around my butt area because it was so purple and red looking. Uh, I uh, I always wonder about the geese because I walk, what do you wonder. They suck. Well, because every day when I walk into work, I walk by a couple parks and it's just completely populated with geese. Right. And mm-hmm. you have to walk through them and they're on the sidewalks and everything else. But you really are six inches a foot from them because oh, yeah. of the way they, they, they congregate. And I was like, if this guy wanted to just turn around and zap me, man, I mean, I, am, I he could. So I, Oh, he will. Yeah. I mean, he I'm, will. I'm, you do this every day? Well, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're getting bit. No, I, it's going to happen. I, I, and you're going to be so mad. We already know some days. Hey, goddamn bit me. Some days are five or six. Some days there's 500. Do they I mean, ever? It it's like, mild, so it's not going to end that way. I, ha- no, no. I know, I know how it ends. I was going to stop there. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. We know exactly. That'll be on how. Reddit. <laughs> right. When did an animal do you dirty? 844-999-OLA. And look at this guy. He's really going in on that cruise. That's probably why they haven't bitten you yet, man. I heard the dog story. And the, right, and the bunnies. The and fog, the bunnies. The, the fog raw. Yeah. Hello, Shad. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. So uh, I was a kid in upstate New York. Uh, I was about nine or ten. And uh, walking out to uh, our car, we had a little Chevy S10, you know, with the bench seat across the front. And that was it. And uh, so I'm walking out, and my neighbors had some turkeys, pet turkeys. And they were always out and about or whatever, and uh, I was the first one out of the house, and for whatever reason, I don't know if it was the color of my clothes or what, but uh, the tur- one of the male turkey took off after me, and I took off running, and I ran into the truck, and the turkey came in right behind me and ripped me to pieces. How, long, the how long were you stuck inside of the truck with this thing? 
Oh, my Lord. It was like 10 minutes because my mom and her boyfriend couldn't stop fumbling over themselves, laughing their butts off because they thought it was hilarious. Meanwhile, I'm screaming bloody murder, thinking I'm going to die by a turkey. How big was this turkey? <laughs> well, you know, I was about 9 or 10, so it was roughly the same size as me, same maybe turkeys. a foot or two shorter. People but, I mean, it was the thing was big, and it was, uh, it was a pet, so it's not like it had to fight for food no. or anything. People don't realize that turkeys really never stop growing. No, but in their lifetime, they, 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 they keep growing until they die, pretty much. Wait, uh, was he biting yeah. you or pecking you? Oh, he did every. It was pecking at me. It was digging at me with its talons. I came out, out looking like I got in a fight with like a razor blade fence or something. It was horrible. Let me I, ask just, you that. I was cut. <laughs> and I like, I like that your parents are laughing at this while you're just getting butchered by the sun. Oh, does yeah, it bring you? Uh, uh, they were, I mean, they tripped, fell, rolled on the ground. They're laughing, just so audible. I mean, I could hear them over my screams. And, oh, it was horrible. Do it. Does uh, Thanksgiving bring you great joy? Oh yes, yeah. so we definitely ate that bird that year. Oh, oh, yeah. In fact, right after, as soon as hunting season came around, that's the only thing I wanted to kill. Hey, What's bud. <laughs> <laughs> see you Thanksgiving. Yeah. God damn. Can't wait to see that thing pop out of your stomach so I know you're done. What is it about birds? Like, no one's ever scared of birds, but somehow if a bird comes after you, it terrifies you. Yeah, I mean, it's like people have stories, I mean, wherever you live, about walking by and a crow once in a while just going crazy. Like crow, but even like a peacock. Yeah. And I know they're nasty animals, but like... You think to yourself, how scared of a peacock are you going to be? And only one time have I had an, an interaction with an aggressive peacock, go figure. Years ago, uh, the band is playing. Somebody They own like a ton of property, but from where you can park to get to the place we're going to play, not quite like a cornfield, some kind of field with just tall-ass grass, right? And I, you can just kind of see the tops of each other's heads bounce into this tall-ass grass. And I see my buddy Tony just takes off. His head is now moving forward. He's screaming, and we're like, the hell are you doing, man? Because he's not a dude who's going to run, right? So obviously, something bad's going on. I, there's like this angry peacock, and now you feel like you're on the set of like Jurassic Park 2 when the raptors are in this field. Like, you don't know where it is, but you can hear this thing shuffling, and it's freaking angry, man. You know what I mean? So you're running, and you think you see a slash of blue. We finally get to the property. When you turn around, like this peacock comes out of the grass. It stops chasing us at this point, but like, in that moment, it's a peacock. But I'm like, that thing is a goddamn monster. Mm-hmm. And they yeah, look big, they beautiful the blue and purple freaking monster. But the thing is, we still had to finish the set and walk that s back, man. We know he not. was in there. Yeah, and it was night, but I don't, I don't know if they put it away. If he just wasn't out, but like we were kind of laughing. So I'm like, why are we so goddamn scared, man? It's a freaking peacock. I don't know what it was, uh, Ted, but uh, growing up, uh, a lot of people had peacock feathers as decorative things in their home. Yeah, it was a big thing. Sure. I don't know what it was. It was like the era. It was cool peacock looking, feather, but but you don't see them as much anymore, dude. It's from like well, the early uh, 20th century. Like the, like the, the headdresses and all that. Right, like women wear hats and stuff. It's like the fancier the feather was, it kind of denoted how much money you had. I see. Uh, That's why I'm, none, of my, none of my friends have peacock well, feathers. I had uh, I had pigeon feathers. <laughs> exactly. <Right. laughs> That's what, what is that? Like it's a duck feather. It's a crow. When did an animal do you dirty? 844-999. I would never, don't ever put a hat with crow feathers. Why, first of all, why would I, and then why not? I don't, Miles, maybe you said it as a joke. I just have a fear that, like, the other crows would see it and would, would attack. Well, I think they might. They might get into yeah. your golf cart and steal your crackers. Yeah. That does not sound personal at all. That's what they do. Wait a minute. Now you had one steal crackers? They I thought it was just cigarettes. Anything. Anything. You got food, they're going for food. See, they thought the cigarettes were some type of food. All right. Yeah. I think he thought they were camel lights. They're bastards, man. They're smart. <laughs> oh, man, these are my brand. Come on, man. Menthol again. Yo, man. <laughs> Hello, Lisa. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. So, uh, kind of a funny story. We were going back home to Baltimore to spread my mom's ashes. She wanted right her... Wait, 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 wait. She wanted her ashes spread in Baltimore? Yeah, we're from Baltimore. She wanted it spread in Ocean City. Okay. Oh, all right. All right. That's, That's a lot different. That's different. Yeah. Get some fries. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we go back. We're in a minivan. I take night shift driving. We're going through Kansas. About two hours in, this huge dog runs across the road. Highway. I freak out. My dad flies off the back seat. Oh, no. So I calm down, hyper vigilant. Lots of caffeine. About an hour goes by. I see a tractor trailer. Swerve. I'm like, uh oh. Two huge bucks. Their racks were taller than the minivan. If I'd have hit them, I would have died. 
my dad goes flying off the back seat. <laughs> Scared out of my mind, almost daybreak after that. About 45 minutes later, I see a raccoon run across. Cool, I slowed down, he was passed. He does a U-turn and comes back in front of me. Did you hit him? Nope. Swerved and my dad goes rolling off the back seat again. And then I was like, I'm not driving through Kansas again. No, I was going to say, I, I, the, the moral of the story is don't drive in Kansas. Especially at night. Well, unless you're my dad, because when he drove through Kansas at night coming back, a leaf didn't even blow in front of the road. I believe that. Did you? Were you able to uh, spread your mom's ashes? Yes, okay. we did. How, right. how did you do it? I mean, like, look, man, we all lived in Baltimore City as well, which is why we question why you'd want your ashes there. But Ocean City, man, it is the ocean. And like any beach that's on an ocean, it's awfully windy. I mean, did any of mom kind of blow back to the beach or brush someone's ice um, cream? It got on my dad. Okay. Oh, oh good, good, good. It, it, it got all over him, and it was one of those, you know... She just can't leave you alone. No, can yeah, you? Even say, still nagging like, me. Oh. Right, he, probably, he probably didn't care too much. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's got his secrets. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know. We, <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Like, what, did he mix any Old Bay in yeah. at first? Oh, jeez. Then we wake up. Then. Then we yeah, actually, we did. Because in Maryland, that's not a question. Them. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. We mix their ashes with Old Bay. I was thinking that's they grew up in Maryland. Like, I'd be like, if you cremated me, like, yeah, mix, mix it with Old Bay. Bay yeah. Put me under crab. The seriousness of the conversation could be something like, well, let's go and do what she wanted to do and just go to Big Packers and sit down and think about her. Yeah. Because exactly. But why but don't see, we go to the Brass Ball Saloon and think about her life? Oh, what they would do in Maryland, and make no mistake, if that's the decision the you made, clam. they would all get airbrushed T-shirts that, like, right. made my mom to rest in the bearded exactly. clam and wear a prep, like, they summer 2018. Dead. dead, or, like, dead naked. Dead, just, <laughs> dead mom lifeguard. Right, man. Right. Like, believe me, it's somehow, <laughs> but that would be an honor. Oh, Ed, dead mom <laughs> dumping ground. Right. Naked. Lacrosse. My mom loved big peckers. <laughs> It's just like I got a brass ball saloon T-shirt because I know my mom would have liked it. Well, those biscuits at breakfast are amazing. That's I mean, that is the Maryland way. I see what they did there with that gimmicky name. I think they should spread mine in the turtle and get some wings. <laughs> that, the turtle would be yeah. a bar and yes, restaurant. Right, my right, bad. Right, exactly. That sounds really weird if you don't know. When uh, <laughs> when did an animal do you dirty? Eight four four nine 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 Ola. Hello, Thomas. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. Hey, so I used to live down in downtown Gig Harbor. I had a little tiny, like, uh, grandmother house, uh, first house with my wife, and we had a problem with these three or four otters that kept getting under the house. Otters? And they, yeah, the big sea otters. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Just they, in my life, I have not had many, uh, many otter interactions. Did, yeah. Oh. That is weird. I, after, after having to deal with them, I personally just, I hate otters. I despise them. Everything <laughs> in their being hate every single fur on their body. Um, you're an otter. You're an otter hater. One of the few. Yep. <laughs> um, and they kept getting under the house. They're scratching at the floorboards, destroying, crapping everywhere. It would waft in, stink up the house. One of them got in, chased my wife around while I was at work. <laughs> got into the um, house and actually she was being chased around by an otter? Yeah, and then she smacked it with the broom and it took off. Get away! Yeah. So I finally had it. I had put fencing around. I did everything. I put centronella, everything I could possibly do. And I eventually just broke down. And like, you know what? I'm just going to get some bear spray. And I'm just going to, well, when next time they're under it there, I'm just going to douse the whole bottom part of the house. And I, a couple weeks later, I hear him again. I run out spray out the like basically the entire can under the house and I'm waiting for them to run out and then like 30 seconds later I hear beating on the window and I look up and my wife is just in tears because all the bear spray wafted up through the floorboards oh, back into the house. I was going to say, it had, it, had, it, had to be in the, it had to go into the house eventually. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not like a seal so, down there, obviously. So, how long does that stay in your house? Uh, well, it was about 9 or 10 at night, and luckily it didn't really get in the uh, bedroom so much, so we wet a couple towels and put them underneath the, the doors and kind of just stayed in there for the night. But the American it dream. Like pepper spray for mm -hmm. a couple days. Yep. And did the otters leave? No. Really? <laughs> yep. They're still living Never there? Left. Did you tell the people that you sold the house to that there was an otter family? No. 
<laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. I mean, listen, man, you know, you might want to tell hey, you might want to check this light. Switch. Not, hey, by the way, there's a family of otters. But you got to think, like, why here? And I mean, like, what like, is so appealing about my the house? Like, you know, it, maybe it's just how close they were to the water. I would I say know. that most people, though, if you said, hey, there's a family of otters who live here, they'd be damn, that's uh, cute. Oh, that's cute. Until right? you have to deal with it. Right, less right? that you know they've been terrorizing this poor man and his mm -hmm. wife for and years. Man, I'm telling you, the broom is the go My mother is deathly afraid of snakes, just like you, Ted, all right? So, all right. deathly afraid of snakes. And this has been well known. And one of the houses, and keep in mind one thing about my mother. She is an exceptionally well put together person. If you can see her, she'll be dressed to the night, all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Takes pride in it. So I come home from school one day, and I walk in, and she's still wearing what she'd been wearing from the night before, like when she went to bed. But, like, she's got a boob hanging out. Her hair is crazy. It looks like my mother has been on a crack bender. Mm -hmm. But I have been at school for six hours. And I'm like, what? And you can see, like, the dried streak tears. Basically, a snake had gotten into the, just a little garter snake. I mean, maybe a foot long. But the garter snake, it was in the kitchen. She saw it. She was frozen. She was petrified. All this stuff. But she was like, I didn't want to leave the kitchen because I didn't want it to disappear in the house. And apparently this went on for hours. Standoff. It is a snake because she's freaking out. And the snake's indifferent to her because this woman's not a threat, right? So she went to nudge it, she said, with the broom. And this is so much my mother. She's like, I know. But keep in mind, when she's telling me this story, she is not calm. It is expletive laced, right? Say, like, and I brushed it. With a broom, and that mother effer hissed at me. You don't hiss at my mom in her home, apparently. She, <laughs> in that moment, basically the snake hissed at her, and this after hours, she snapped and beat the living piss out of the thing with the goddamn broom. Don't eff with me in my house. I'm like, Mom, Mom, I'm going to grab you something to drink. <laughs> Just like, sit down, take a load off. It's okay. When did an animal do you dirty? 844-999. Ola, hold the line where your call is coming up. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. Ola, bitches. You're listening to the Men's Room. A grizzly bear attacked an elk hunter who surprised the stow and her cub north of Yellowstone National Park with the bear sinking her teeth into his arm and clawing his eye before Jeez. another hunter drove her off. The victim recounted the mulling of Bob Lagasa. In the Galat National Forest was at least the seventh bear attack on a human since May in the northern Rocky Mountains. He's awaiting his second surgery, he told the AP in an interview from his hospital room, uh, Ruben Bozeman, that he and his hunting partner were moving towards some elk when they heard a growl. It was a two-year-old cub and its mother about 12 yards away from the tree that he had just stepped away from. After the cub growled and moved aside, then the mother charged. I was hoping it was going to be a bluff charge, and halfway through I realized this is going to be the real deal. The bow hunter from Hayden, Ohio, didn't have time, uh, Idaho, didn't have time to reach for his bear spray. The grizzly bit his hand, breaking a bone in his forearm and clawing at his eye, leaving a gash across the bridge of his nose. His hunting partner, Greg Gibson, discharged the bear spray, and the grizzly let go. Uh, they pulled, uh, then he pulled out his own spray, but inadvertently, he sprayed himself with a mace like <laughs> mist. Gibson discharged his canister again, and the wind blew the mist back into his eyes as the bears <laughs> ran off. <laughs> Less than three weeks earlier, the two men made a bear spray safety video for Gibson's Montana Guide Service. Now both were on the ground, blinded by bear spray. The men were eventually able to get back to the, the truck there. When did an animal do you dirty? 844-999-OLA. Hello, Keith. Welcome to the men's room. Hey. Hola. How you guys doing? Doing well, sir. How are you? Ah, uh, not too bad. On my way home. Okay. Good work. So, this actually happened about two weeks ago. I am heading home. I live in Eatonville, heading up 161. Um, it was pretty dark out. Um, car was coming towards me with its brights on, and so I just shielded my eyes. And uh, right when the car passed, I just happened to look over to the left and right out, you know, my peripheral, I uh, saw what I thought at first was a bush until I actually focused and saw it was uh, an elk. Um, and I started to slow down, but uh, it stood there and then it decided right as I got, mm, I'll say probably about five feet away from it, it decided to just trot across the street. Now, keep in mind, this is the third time it's happened that I've almost hit wildlife out here on the way home. And uh, as it darted across the street, I uh, uh, I slammed on the brakes and had to swerve into oncoming traffic. Oh. Luckily, the car behind 
uh, it was far enough away that, uh, you know, I didn't uh, hit it head on. But um, as I hit the brakes, I swerved, and I just must have clipped his hoof. Uh, when I got home, I noticed that the only damage that I had was just a chipped piece of uh, paint off the bumper. Huh. Meanwhile, yeah. he has painted nails. Right. And he's hurt. Yeah, now he's got painted nails. So what else have you almost said? What, uh, what were the other two occasions? Uh, the other two occasions were uh, deer as well, and there was uh, another pack of elk. Because um, right after 304th, I do believe there's an elk farm right around that area. Um, I was actually on my way to work in uh, my box truck at the time. And uh, it was like six of them jumped across the street. Jeez. Two two were the smart ones, and they stayed on the side uh, while the others decided, hey, man, let's go for it. And, uh, yeah, the box truck I had at the time was uh, pretty large. So if I would have hit those guys, uh, yeah, it would have been uh, <laughs> yeah. you'd pretty be, bad for, all you'd be, for yeah, everyone. You'd be surprised how many people uh, how many people die that way. As far as auto accidents go, you know, obviously you re wreck other vehicles, you, well, you sure. solo crashes, but right there, like if you consider deer to be the animal that kills you, technically is responsible for you, it's like right there up there with a the mosquito and other animals that, you know, play a part in spreading disease or anything else. All right, well, the guy said an elk farm, right? So there's always elk around. So if it's an elk farm, do you just not have fences or? Is there no parameter? You know what I mean? Yeah, like, right. Maybe other elk just come by to visit him in the pen. I mean, like, you know, they, you they drive wonder, by a farm. Is it a wandering elk farm? It's like saying, like, I have a cow farm. Well, where are your cows? I don't know. They're just down the road. Walking around, I figure. You know what I mean? Like, you don't, you don't slam through pigs. Do they, and just, do they know to come home? I, I don't know. I just feel like. That's what I'm saying. Maybe they're not coming home. Maybe it's just like, you maybe know. they're just going to the elk farm. Miles lodge. is over there at the farm. We got to go visit him. <laughs> sniff his butt or whatever like else. If you do. have a prison in the middle of nowhere, that's probably the place where you'll see the most humans. What do you mean? Like, because they got to go visit other humans in. <laughs> so I'm thinking of the farm as like a prison for these elk. Oh, a elk. prison. Oh. Uh, you know what? Bad analogy, boys. Uh. Yeah, I wasn't tracking, man. <laughs> I tried. Elk prison. Ryan Castle, the drug and charge is coming up. We'll sit and spend today with the hands-only CPR edition. These are tunes that will uh, teach you to do CPR. At least you get the right rhythm there on the compressions anyway. Hola. The shenanigans continue on the Men's Room Radio Network. Geico presents Motorcycle Word of the Day. Today's word is tank slapper. Is a tank slapper used to describe a handlebar wobble? Or is it a motorcycle joke that is so funny you just have to slap the gas tank with your hand as you laugh? As in... Oh, man, Daryl told me a great joke last night. It was hilarious. It was something about a dog wearing sunglasses. I wish I could remember. It was a real tank slapper. Geico Motorcycle. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more.